<laughs> you cannot do it. Thought I can. Watch me. Tian, pass me the axe. Come on. <laughs> the meat has addled your brain, Dala. Enough to make me brave. Raisin more like. <laughs> you think yourself man enough to light my axe? <laughs> he thinks himself a god. No more, no less. I be the only man fit to invoke the light's power. And my father, and his father before him. And your wife? <laughs> Surely that was a trick. The sun's reflection, perhaps. The sun. The sun, my left foot. And your daughter? Estra. Only time will tell. We've got time. The night is young. <laughs> and so are we, old friend. I will not leave you here to die. Come now. We must both be brave. Estra? Yes, father. Death is a part of all things. It is not the end. Do you understand? When you're older, you will return to this place. But for now, it's not safe for us. Listen for the tree. It will call you home again. Goodbye, my life.
a story, please. Which one would you have? The one you like, of us, our people. So be it. Settle down then, my light. Let us begin. Tis a tale as old as time itself, when God could live alongside man as if they were kin. For our people were born from a time of great sadness, Estra. The Allfather abandoned our lands, leaving a rift we sought to fill with our own arrogance. A brother would take up arms against his own kin. Our land descended into chaos. Why did they leave? Because someone did a bad thing, and the goddess Idun lost her life as a result. Though not all gods lived, some lingered, traveling by Bifrost to Isa, maintaining bonds with human allies. But when Odin saw what we had wrought, he returned. Was he mad? Oh, yes. But rather than purging humankind, the All-Father granted us the chance to redeem ourselves. A trial of four tests. The prize, our Odell power, and a seat at the table of the Atori. The magic in our spines. Your grandmother teaches you well. Yes, Estra. The Odell power links us to the elder tree, Yggdrasil. It is what makes us stronger, an energy that sets us apart from humankind. Our home, Vingolf, was erected in honor of our new blood, harboring all Atori and allowing us watch over Isa. A chief was selected from these honorable ranks, donning a necklace passed down from Odin that links our soul to the Elder Tree. It has been inherited through Atori generations. And now you have it. Now I do, for my mother passed it to me. So here we sit, little one, protecting that tree until our old father deems us worthy once again of his love, his trust. You think he will? One day, yes. But for now, for now we wait and we do our best. Perhaps one day this will be yours. My darling son, what I would not give to go back, to reach out and warn you of what was to come. But time is not ours to play with. We must take it as it is dealt. I remember the clashing of blades, the sound so loud in the dark. Age is a cruel thing, you know. It puts what we love most just out of our reach. But you, Estra, were just close enough. With shattered hearts we left that dreadful place. A mother should never outgrow her child. You did not fear Nastrand, nor the wilds of ice and rock. And though our journey was long, you uttered not a word of complaint. Bosch would never be your home, not truly. But oh, did the people welcome you. Tion's daughter, child of Anna. You refused to use anything else, you know. 
but it sang in your hands as though it was made for our blood alone to wield. You grew to embody your father, Estra, my son. What a blessing you have been for all of us. Is a tale of the first blue vein, a monster we believed had been committed to the depths of our memory. For many lifetimes ago, the goddess Frigg fell ill, her body overcome by a snake's deadly poison. Despite the best efforts of her husband, Odin could not find a cure amongst his brethren. Instead, he was advised to seek the aid of the Elder Tree, Yggdrasil, which grew at the center of Isa. The tree, in all of its power, mediated life and death through its roots, bringing balance to the world. And so, Odin set off with his uncle Mima and the human hero Vanya to bring his wife to the tree. Upon arrival, Odin offered Frigg's body to the roots of Yggdrasil, guarding it day and night until finally the tree grew over her, welcoming her into its embrace. All around the three men, blue orbs began to rise from plant and animal alike, the world turning a sickly shade. But the beauty was lost on them. Vanya, their human companion, was possessed suddenly by some otherworldly force. The Blue Vein? Yes. Desperate to aid his friend, Mima reached for the man, only to meet his end at the point of a sword. Odin fought the monster beneath the moon, Vanya's eyes bright and blue. Despite the warrior's prowess and beast-like ferocity, Odin brought him down. His blade plunged through the man's heart. And as their lives expired, Odin witnessed their souls rise blue from their chests, welcomed into the boughs of the Elder Tree. The forest returned her colors, and Frigg, once more, opened her eyes. What is happening to him? I'm not sure. Sweet girl. I am here. Shall I fetch Turid or Ursula? No. No. Let me be. Grandmother, please. Let me see my son now, child. It is time. It was so long ago. To think of it is strange. But back when God and man were friend rather than foe, my father was much loved among his kin. Bragi brought happiness to all through song and story. 
Bad things happen to kind people, Estra. I don't know why. And so, on the night of the great feast, his wife died after taking a bite of a poison apple. Edun, goddess of youth, it was awful. Braki was heartbroken, taking to the forest and throwing his harp into the deep waters of Isa's lake, never to sing again, never to smile. Crippled by his loneliness, my father used the last of the magic in his heart to create a companion to fill the void. A friend. You. Me. But I was only one friend when my father had loved hundreds. It was not enough, Estra. I did not ease his sadness. A darkness coated his soul, changing him into a new man. One I did not know. Braki gained the power of foresight, and in doing so, he witnessed the turn of things. The moment the gods would leave your world and head back to their own through the Bifrost. So, when the time came, my father followed Odin through the portal to Askel. Alone. It wasn't all bad, I promise. Braki asked me to do one last thing for him before he left. For the sake of mankind. That's what he said. He told me that if I was patient, I would find a flame-haired girl with a gem that lit up the darkness, and I wouldn't be alone anymore. Bad luck follows that family like a ghost, I swear it. Gentry was a good lad, a kind soul who kept mostly to himself. Many saw Iron as his burden, but I knew that he bore no ill will towards his sister. Gendry wanted the best for her, despite the sadness he could see weighing her down. He knew that she would one day seek to forge her own path and sought to arm her so that Iron could, when the day came, take on the world with no fear in her heart. The knife he made was crude and small, carved with an effigy of the girl who would wield it. The figure was alone. It was dangerous. It would be underestimated. She loved it more than anything, you know that. The boy was aware that I did not approve, but Iron was in his care. It was not my place to say. When she used that knife to defend herself, Iron crossed the line. I could not let her have hold of it for fear of what she may go on to do. So I took it from her, Estra the one thing she had left of her kin. I took it. A while back, Odin picked two trees and breathed on them. Not really sure why. One was ash, the other was elm. The Our Father sired Milgaus, first Hume Man and Hume Woman, Ask and Embla, who would go on to have babies and fill the world with their bloodline. Much to their father's dismay, they didn't love one another enough. Their bond was not strong. Ask really liked his wife, but Embla was scared of him. The spirits say that Ask was obsessed with some tree roots. The power that runs through the world. A bit boring, if you ask me. Embla wanted a friend, so she chose a god. Why not? But Embla liked the god too much, and then things got messy, because you Humes are like that. Both god and man found out. Oh, the drama. The gods tried to be okay with it, but then Ask went and took his own life with a god-forged blade. They weren't okay with that. The spirits say he did it to put an end to a broken heart. 
Odin was really sad, so he made a big decision. No man or woman could ever love a god. Likewise, no god could ever love a human. So great was his upset, Odin made it law that anyone who broke it would be punished. Sacrificed in the name of Ask. Some of you silly Hume still tried. Stupid. Age would come for Embla, but Ask lived in the boughs of the elder tree, Yggdrasil, which the spirits say sprouted from his wound, watered by his blood. Gross. Mm. A lifetime ago, I returned to see the village of my birth destroyed. All that I had loved, I lost in a single night. But rather than remain to rebuild and fulfill my duty to the Elder Tree, I ran. I was lost for so long before I wandered into her foraging for herbs in the forest. My Hildi was kind, gentle, I do not know where I would be now without her. I convinced her to follow me through Isa. She was afraid, hearing tales about the dangers of the land, but we made a home for ourselves anyway, safe with one another. Fosedi was born some years later. I had never known such love. For so long we were happy with one another, alone. But it was not to last. Do you know why they discourage humankind from entering Isa, girl? It is because time is cruel here. It does things to the mind. And my Heldi was losing hers. She missed her people as I missed mine. But to hers, she thought she could return. It consumed her. She prayed to her goddess fire, but heard nothing. She felt alone. A darkness wormed its way into her heart. Heldi saw Fosedi, our love, as a curse. She sought to destroy it, to free herself. She threatened our child, turned on her like an animal. I confronted her, begged her to stop, but she told me she could not love me. That I was selfish, weak. Then. The blue light came. I remember no more. Our time was an era of great quiet for our father. He made us to ease the silence forged from the calm and the cold. But we were not right. Incomplete. Too resilient. Stoic. So our father created you, humankind, to fill the void with your warm hearts and your humor. We could not compete. And so humankind won his favor. You were creative, effervescent. My people were an afterthought, a prototype. He saw our sadness and, to ease it, gifted my people the mountain of Jotunheim. It is where we now stand. A cold, calm place. Bleak and bitter. But it is our own. Our father thought to test us further, for the land was as hard as rock. Each year, crops failed. 
Each year we would pick at the carcass of the mountain to survive. It is only in the time of our new king that my people have known comfort, prosperity. We no longer fear the coming winter. He brought with him a new nourishment, a way for us to survive. My lord is a reminder that the gods still look kindly upon us, their creation, his children. Have you ever felt the grip of death, girl? Do you know its touch? You were there the night Tian foolishly gave his life. You have seen the light go out. I did not enter exile alone. I took with me my son, and together we explored the wilds. We survived for a time, but the mountain, this accursed mountain, was too much for him. The cold came and turned his mouth blue, so blue, as blue as the light that left him when his eyes closed. Our Ordale power, God forged, power I took for myself to reach the summit. There was no respite, the king of old, Stoneheart, threw his men in my way and I slaughtered them where they stood. We fought in the ice and snow. I no longer felt the cold. It did not hurt. The Ferox looked to me and saw resilience. Survival. You tell me I was not worthy of a seat, yet I became their king. Look at them now, once starving, now frightened. They were lost before me, but I brought with me the key to their survival. All it takes is a small sacrifice. I am no stranger to sacrifice. this battle. I see your power, girl. It is radiant. Stop. Do it. Be the Atori your father never was. I said stop. Take my mantle. And me. Perfect.
Eden was deadly dull. Though, I suppose you must be if your days revolve around apples. Easy prey. Some would say, low-hanging fruit. <laughs> Get it? Honestly, I am wasted on you mortals. You'd think, after all those years tending her orchard, she'd have been able to tell the difference. Her fault, not mine. It really was rather tragic. Although, now that I think about it, even I didn't expect Odin to blame you flashbacks. <laughs> Such fun. He always lived for the drama. One god got murdered, so he flipped his lid and closed the Bifrost. <laughs> we do worse things to one another all the time. Poor Bragi wept, and he wept, so the old daddy took it upon himself to drop the hammer down. Doll, 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 doll. Have a boy? If you do, he won't be as good as my boy. He had his mother's eyes and his father's fur. My fur. All red and glossy. But he had smarts, my boy. His brother was a climber, his sister was a jumper. But this boy, he was a thinker. So he thunk. A lot. My boy left his puzzles on all of our trees. But as he grew, his fur was not as glossy, his eyes not as bright. My boy was ill. He asked to see the world beyond our tree. Why? I don't know. It's a good tree, but we left it anyway. I took my boy through Isa, around the chilly hill, and through the dark place. He left puzzles along the way, marking our journey home. We made it to Ola, the land where the spirits say the pines touch the sky. My boy liked it there, very much so. But we did not make it home. The spirits took my son in Nastrand, the darkest of places, so far from our tree. Are you having bad dreams again? I do not think them dreams anymore. Oh. I'm scared, Estra. So am I. But we should not fear being afraid. It means we are human. I'm a frog. <laughs> you certainly are. What do you think's waiting for us? Hmm. Maybe another undead. I don't want to fight that. I would take it over a god. Do you mean that? Yes. No. I'm unsure. I would rather no one was there. Just you, me and the tree. Sort this all out without anyone interfering. We've done pretty well so far. I'm sure it'll be fine. <sighs> Try and get some sleep, little friend. We will soon find out. This tale will not show my kind in a favorable light. These stories rarely do. <sighs> mm. 
My wife was not the last I sought the tree's help in bringing back from the precipice of death. But I had learned from my previous mistakes, Estra. I went alone. A father should never outlive his daughter, even one of immortal flesh such as I. She was dying, and I was desperate. The tree is neither good nor bad. It simply exists to keep the world in a state of equilibrium. But as I asked more of it, I tipped that balance. You must understand, we could never have known. The Elder Tree grew of Ask. It was not made by us. It is a scale, the keeper of peace. But the soul of a god is worth thousands. The tree, seeking an equivalent exchange, cast out the blue vein plague from its roots and harvested those thousands of lives. I have never known such horror. Their screams haunt me, Estra. I tore the heart of the tree from its bark, halting the flow of souls to its core. My daughter faded, but the killing stopped. It was ours to hold, our gift. The knowledge was too tempting for immortal hearts. It is why, even as we speak now, one of my own seeks to abuse the tree as I once did. It must be destroyed at all costs. Are you too young to know of love, girl? The matters of the heart have always been my domain, but I did not expect to fall foul of them myself. Sigurd would bring me flowers some days, and I would take them back through the Bifrost to watch them wither on my mantle. I had loved him. Until your father took it upon himself to sever the strings that bound us, permanently. Perhaps love is yet unknown to you, but you have felt much loss, little girl. To watch from afar as all that you have ever known is stripped away. An immortal heart bleeds just as much, you know. I mourned for what felt like a lifetime in Esco, until a whisper unlocked Odin's sordid secrets. A way to bring my lover back. Now I have a chance to undo the damage your father did. The complicity of your people. Death is not the end, girl. It is merely an agonizing inconvenience. Champion. Shame. No. 
up this time. You sure you can't just chop it in half with your axe? In days of old, my king would bring light to his axe. He once told me it came from the power in his spine, the strength of his heart. You refused to use anything else, you know. But it sang in your hands as though it was made for our blood alone to wield. Our power, Estra. Our birthright, forged by the gods themselves. That which sits in our spines and makes our blood sing. Oh, my light, my darling girl, you merely need to open your eyes. My power is God forged. Red Hand said that Eri could light his axe. My father could because the power in our spines is God forged. This is all we have left. Go home now? Yeah, little friend. We can go home.